Hi, everybody. This is Craig Hardesty with Out on Film, and thank you for joining us this um, for this Out on Film in conversation with the team from Peer Kids. And so I'm really thrilled to have with us uh, today overall Princess Crystal Labasia, who you have just seen in this film. Crystal, thank you for joining us. Okay. And producer Chester Algernal Gordon. Chester, thank you for joining us for this conversation about Peer Kids. And welcome to Out on Film. Thank you for having us. Uh, so Chester, I want to start with you. What, how did you come to be involved in this project? And how did you come to tell the story of, of these people at this time? Sure. So I am one half of Chelligance. Uh, I'm Elegant. Elegance is my husband. <laughs> People start to call us Chelligance. I'm just <laughs> coining that term. <laughs> um, Elegance started shooting this project in his, uh, during his undergrad at Columbia. Uh, after the Marine Corps, he spent, uh, since the age of 16, Elegance was kicked out of his house. He was homeless. Um, Elegant met Christopher, met, sorry, met Crystal on Christopher Street. And I think Crystal had only been in New York for like a month when they had met. And um, if my memory serves me correctly, Crystal Elegance literally just bought all this equipment and it was a project on uh, finding networks in New York, like social networks, similar to Warhol and Studio 54 and, you know, all that stuff that he did back in the day. The, the what is it called? His art place that he did, the all aluminum place. But anyway, oh, right. it, it was similar to that. Okay. And Christopher Street is a, is a similar network. And Christopher, Crystal was on Christopher Street and they elegance put up a camera started just literally put the camera there and would just ask her questions and crystal was like girl i'm not feeling this you know i i don't know if you know i can have you ask you questions like this and you know it doesn't feel like you know it's a film that you know she wanted to do and she said in order for you to make this film about me we need to be friends you know like we need to be real friends like you know when i need you you need to be there you know you need to be my real friend, basically. And ever since that talk with Crystal, it informed the way in which the gaze was set up to film everyone in the film. Okay. So Crystal, this is, this is your, you, you know, you tell your story, it's very personal, but it's also in this film, very intimate window into your life, as well as the lives of the other people in the in the film what made you decide ultimately that you wanted to tell your story the way that you told your story here well um in our community especially for women of transitional experience it's um coming from kansas city and other spaces i've seen a lot of black market transactions and when we say that that's like a legal consumption of hormonal treatments and silicone procedures just to be the woman that they feel they are. And I was afraid of doing things that way. So I was not always in a search for answers and, uh, and that was before internet and all of that. So it was like, it was always, I would perform. So I would know some girls who trans, uh, who may have some breast augmentation done or whatever, but, I didn't want to go about it that way to get that done. And so then as I continued to go on my journey, I got to New York uh, after by way of Philadelphia. I heard that if you would like to do it medically, they're a little bit more further when it comes to pushing for policy because I was very good, big in advocacy. And so when I came, I just took a chance. I could have went back to being a dancer and doing just performing and pageantry back in the West Coast. But then I was like, let me just take $13, get on this Chinese bus, get to New York. And so then I got into uh, uh, the shelter system there. And my escape, because I'm from the West, uh, I was raised in California, was water and land. I just like to be grounded. And so that's when I saw like as Chester mentioned, I saw elegance out there. And 
just, I, it felt like an opportunity. I didn't know anyone at that time, but then I did know that that was the space that I held dear for the little time that I was there because I would just go, I would play spades and I would bring food for others who didn't really have a shelter to go to or a kitchen to cook in. And so when I see someone with a camera, for me, my antennas went up because I've always been someone around entertainment and media and I know how things could be taken out of context. And some of these kids weren't in the right mind because they were in their leisure and numbing themselves from their circumstances. And so it was just like, okay, I just need to see it. First, my first sit down with them was just to see what the project was about. And then as I, he told me more about his story, I told him more about my, where I'm coming from. It just seemed more organic and like, okay, it was a safe space to speak and share more of, my, more of myself. And also it, did, it didn't hurt that I didn't really have any friends who I can speak to on that level or on that, uh, that degree. And so to be able to have like-minded conversations and actually speak theory and speak uh, how we felt we were uh, uh, discriminated against our professions and our interests, it kind of like, there was a bond and a friendship that was already growing. So I was like, okay, if I'm gonna be this transparent in my journey to becoming the woman that I am, then I really want, I want to know that you're my friend before, and this is just not you getting the footage that you need for a project. And so then that's when, um, yeah, that's when I decided that. And I think it would help more people with the honest portrayal, not just a simple, oh, it's going to be easy. You go get your letters and then you get to get it done. And then that's it. There's a whole lot that goes into that you're going to be on what you want. And so I, I just want to be transparent in that way. So the kids back in Kansas City movies can have someone that can tell them a true depiction of what it is that they're talking about. And so Chester, there's a lot, or the portrayals that are in this film, like Crystal's, are very intimate. Um, how, how how do you get people to trust you at that level? No, yeah. and and you and there's such care taken with yeah, everybody is. that you talk to, and that really does come through. The the care that that you all take in portraying people as, as they're talking and their stories. How do you gain entree into yeah. lives the way that you were able to do? I think being human and remembering that we're human. I feel like, for instance, I want to return back to your first question too. When I first joined the process of Peer Kids, uh, Elegance was already, you know, five years into filming. And I remember when Elegance called Crystal, it was when we first started dating. And this is before I jumped in the film or whatever. And Elegance was like, you know, I have a man now. And Crystal was like, you have a man? <laughs> you know, she was like, what? Cause you know, they know each other's tea you know they are like they know you know she knows what elegance was you know up to before we met <laughs> and like you know and she had just got in a relationship too so you know and just listen like they literally talked for like an hour about not even the film just like talking about random shit crystal was talking about like excuse my language she was talking about politics she was talking about you know i'm thinking about moving here you know she was talking about her man she was describing jeremy to elegance and blah 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 and I thought that was beautiful because I had saw this cut that they had put together and I was like, wow, the cut that you put together so far, because the cut didn't feel like the conversation they had. You know, the conversation was just so fluid and so easy, but the footage was there, the gaze that, you know, again, I, I like, you know, I drink with Crystal. I smoke with Crystal. You know, I... I call Crystal on her birthday. I send her messages, you know, like it's a real friendship. It's like, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not one for the audience, but it was one for us. And it was like, after, after when you become friends with somebody, it's easier to see your truths. It's easier to see, you know, it's like, you have the best, uh, you have the best, normally people have the best, uh, 
advice for their friends, you know? Because of it's easy for you to look at someone else's life and tell them what's wrong versus look at yourself and see what's wrong with yourself. And I think Crystal and Elegance did that for each other. She told him what was wrong with him. He told her what was wrong. <laughs> and it was like, you know, it's a, it was a, it was an ebb and flow. And I think that, to be honest with you, I think Elegance got so, so many people to agree to be on camera because of Crystal, to be quite frank, because of his relationship with Crystal, because Crystal was, you know, Elegance was from the community too. He was there, but Crystal was there in that moment. You understand? And it's different than your time there, because I'm from DC. I know the girls from DC. The girls in DC know who I am from back in the early 2000s. But it's like, you know, I don't know them now. I don't know that who's out there right now. I don't know who's there right now. But Crystal knew who was there right now, who had been there. And Crystal was aware of everyone. And, you know, a lot of those people, literally, I remember when we went back to shoot, to do pickups. And I remember walking down. Actually, we didn't even do pickups that day. I think we were just hanging out at Christopher Street. You remember that, Crystal? And we were walking. It was me, Crystal, Jeremy, and Elegance. And we were walking towards the pier. And literally, every person we pass, because, you know, for us, walking to the pier, we always know somebody on our way down to the pier, going down Christopher Street, uh, starting from, like, I don't know, uh, Stonewall. Like, as soon as you hit Stonewall, actually, not even Stonewall, before Stonewall, you start to see everybody. Literally, everybody's out yeah. there. And walking down there, literally, Chris was like, girl, hey! Hey, girl! And they're like, I can't see it so long! Can you see it? Chris! Like, you know, it was like, and it, that's how I think it was, he was able to do that, and get people to do that. It was literally deciding that I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to, like, looking like we look look down at Crystal, we look up at Crystal on screen, if you notice, or we look at Crystal at eye level, but we're never looking down at her. We're never looking down at anyone on screen. You understand? And I think a lot yeah. of docs that you see, because of the 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 the, the gaze in which it's shot through is so uh, judgmental and not as close. I think with the and they're trying to figure it out. I don't think we're trying to figure anything out versus like literally trying to be the fly on the wall. Like Crystal will call us and be like, y'all, I'm doing this this weekend. I feel like this is a part of my story. Like, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. Like, I need you to come see me this weekend. And it's like, okay, we have to go see Crystal this weekend, <laughs> you know? And like literally becoming a part of each other's lives and making sure that all of these important moments were captured on film. So, and, and it's also like, I just want to add something. We're working on a documentary right now that's from the 1920s. Oh, an alarm is going off. Where's that coming from? I don't know. Uh, but uh, Crystal, Yes, we're working on a documentary right now from the early 19th century, sorry, about James Reese Syrup. And I'm noticing that there is no content of Black lives from that time, a lot of content. And even when you look at the LGBT community, there is not a lot of content that exists about our lives and what we've gone through that, you know, if we, if Crystal had this video of herself before she came to New York City, it would have been even easier for her. She would have gone, not easier, I'm not saying like that, but it would have been, it, it would have been much different she would have had like a true, she would have seen the true playing field and when she was arriving to and known how to navigate it even better than she did the first time she did it, you know? So right. I think that ultimately she's a sacrifice, like she gave her life, gave like showing her life so that everyone else that came behind her that not necessarily walk in her exact shoes but you know, trying to find their set of shoes to walk into right. can yeah. see her story and be inspired. Yeah. And and I think I think it's interesting that you that you say that because one of the things I wanted to talk about is the movie opens with a statement. Uh, and when you're talking about not being able to find footage of your lives, you know, prior to uh, you know, it starts with 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 a statement of, you know, the Stonewall riots cheered the advancements of white queer people and ignored the fate of queer people of color. Um, yes. And one of the things that struck me in, in this film in particular, uh, especially as a documentary about people who are 
in precarious positions, we'll, we'll say, uh, and surviving, but also thriving. Uh, but it's not really about survival because you find all of these moments of sheer beauty of people's humanness. And, and Crystal, when you show us that part of you, that beauty that comes through, do you think that makes it easier for people to see you and say, I can, I can be me. I, I can be this woman of this experience. Mm -hmm. Even though it's hard, you're, you're not saying that it's easy, but yeah, <laughs> you know, so such beautiful moments that are captured of your experience. And, and when you see that, kind of what does that do for you? I mean, for me, it what, to share a space with uh, a group of people, because I was, yes, I was the only um, tra person of trans experience on there, but to see all the different people, like you, you see my backdrop. So to see a lot of people from that community that has been thriving beyond Stonewall uh, for so long, supporting each other in spite of the lack of resources, to see that community that is still doing it in spite the inaccuracies and the throwaway of money towards resources that are supposed to be help, uh, helping us, see that community still choose to go to the pier and lean on each other and to, to use each other's housings as safe spaces. I, at one point when I got my house, I had six to seven people choosing to stay at my home versus going to a place like Sylvia Rivera's place. Not saying they're not meeting the need, but we the conditions uh, outweigh the purpose for them to give a shot to somebody else, a friend or a family member. So I, I, I just feel like seeing that we, he, we were able to honestly be depicted in a film that doesn't, that goes beyond just the gentrification of people seeing us on the pier that may look like dirty clothes or that that to be on the pier taking a quick nap because we were a little tired because it's been a long night because it's not safe to go to sleep at night when everybody's trying to get a quick come up for the morning time for breakfast so it's like i think i think it just to have someone give a bring a reality to that to prepare those people who may have to go through that season because we all face seasons in life. Um, it doesn't have to be a permanent uh, circumstance. Um, I think that was what I was happy to see. It, it caught a different, it didn't catch me just being in the SRO. It caught me getting a place. It caught me re-engaging with my family. It, and at that point I was stable enough to re-engage. It caught me, uh, it, 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 it did end before my finalizations of uh, surgeries, but at the same sense, you saw me attempt to go to my appointments uh, uh, during that time because it wasn't too long ago that New York City also didn't have uh, clearance for people to get surgeries. That wasn't too long ago. This was, uh, my surgery didn't get approved and I had to go out of state to get it. Um, and it didn't get approved until Trump was put in office. So that was only four years ago that we got to a space to where people have a state that they could come to that, and not have to convince people that this is who they are and can I do it safely before going overseas? Um, and I, I think that just having someone that was willing to bring an honest depiction without dramatizing it, without pulling out what they wanted to get just to make the story TV worthy. Um, Cause I remember one thing Elegance asked me, do I want to put this, uh, do I want to make this just a fun, a, fu uh, um, uh, a film that brings in funding for nonprofits or do I want to make this open to the public to where more people can receive it and see it? And I was like, yes, like one route would be the easy fix but the other route will reach millions of people that won't, don't have nonprofits in their state or their local community.
I want someone to be able to look on Google and pull this video up, mm -hmm. go on Netflix or go somewhere and look at this film and feel inspired. I need this to make it into an LGBT library. Because when I was in Kansas City, we had to go to a slash porn store, neighborhood local LGBT store to get films that spoke to our narrative. And I need those kids to also be able to pull this out and find a story that sp speaks to them, not just in a homosexuality way, but in an inclusive way that speaks to their transition. Mm -hmm. And Chase, oh, go ahead. I just wanted to add something to Crystal too. We also, we had footage of like Crystal walking her first ball. We had footage of, you know, Crystal voguing, like, you know, becoming a film queen performer and then mastering her category. But again, it was one of those things, like she said, do we want to glamorize it? Like a film like Kiki, which is made by a white director, you know? Or do we want to show, or Paris is Burning that also glamorizes it in a way? Or do we want to show the nitty gritty mm -hmm. of how it is and show, you know, why everyone's responsible for this, basically? Everyone, right. <laughs> the gentrifiers, all of it, you know? And that's the movie yeah. decided to make it. Like, it's they your fault. Take, they take <laughs> pictures, they love to see us perform, they give us a fat check. And then the person doesn't have anything to put it towards, but right. yeah. that means it's and, and we also wanted Crystal to have something for herself too, which is why you only see her giving a little hand performance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's also, and 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 given the, how the, the the statement where the movie starts and 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 showing kind of the the way that you portrayed your lives, this is not a Trump era issue. This is this is a, a Obama issue that goes back representation <laughs> goes back the the ignoring of the community goes back and, and Chester as you were just saying we are all complicit uh, mm -hmm. from 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 the touristy gawkers to even that you talk about a little bit the Wall Street guys who come through the pier to pick up people yeah. and then you, you know try try to renegotiate uh, yeah, you know, yeah. everything. But it's also in a way that doesn't make everybody a villain. Yeah, well, it's seeing the human in everyone, you right. know, because villains, yeah. uh, one thing that I've learned in making films is everyone's human. No matter how bad you are, like, I remember when I first watched Crystal Mother and her aunt misgendered her, right? Or at first her aunt was nicer and then she changed when she was around her mother because that's her sister and she's around her own sister, you know? Right. And I was really upset when I first watched that. Like, I was like, I don't understand it. I, I just, I just couldn't be in that room. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was like, I just couldn't. <laughs> and then I saw the face that Crystal made when she said, how are you going to get into heaven? And Crystal nodded and was like, yeah. And Everything in that moment, I understood. Yes, I understood that Crystal understood that like, you know, if she loves her mother and her aunt, I have to love her mother and her aunt because I'm her friend. And, you know, I have to line up according to how she feels and respect her, you know, and respect that she loves them. And I think that, you know, even with opinions, you know, and I think that everyone has the opportunity to change and, and learn and I think that, you know, uh, everyone is human and we all have yeah. made mistakes sometimes. And some of us can, it's so easy for us to judge people. It's so easy for us to say, I don't wanna deal with that right now. And because of life is happening in this moment and you know, whatever consciousness is, you know, that's what we are. And being conscious beings, you know, it's hard sometimes. And I, and I do see, you know, growing up with beliefs and growing up like people who vote for Trump or people who are Republican rather, or people who are Democrat, you grew up your entire life believing in these things and what you are, you know? And, and it's hard to, or military people, it's hard to deprogram them once they've served or once you've, you know, been a certain type of way for a very long time. I, and for me- like, And I, that's what this film is supposed to do, work through that. Go ahead, Crystal. The, uh, and just to add to that, because it was, um, I remember that moment too. Um, it's uh, the fun, the funny thing about that. Just this recent, um, just this year, her daughter, um, I got re reached out to by a cousin from uh, that's affiliated with their uh, with that auntie's family, and 
her that auntie's daughter referred the the my cousin who's trying to transition to me because they felt like they they got disowned by their mother and they they didn't know who to turn to when they were in a dark space and so her the same person's daughter made thought of me to guide my cousin through their transition all the way from Ohio. And so I, I, it, I don't believe if that moment wasn't took in place and they didn't see progress and that it could be done in a safe manner and it doesn't deteriorate our success rate if we're supported or if we're just, if we just, you know, have a little bit more of that fight in us, because it's already a protest to be who we are right. in spite yes. of the naysayers. And so like, I guess in being successful in doing that, that this visibility, this, the, the, the even going back, because I could have very well stayed into my bubble and just been right. to myself. But so going back made it to where it brought a, a connection or a lifeline to another family member that's facing the same type of ostracization. And it, it, it's, it, it's like, it was just funny, a full circle moment. So if that moment wouldn't have happened, her daughter probably wouldn't have reached out to me to guide my cousin so that's beautiful yeah <laughs> it is absolutely and it's a stunning moment in the film mm -hmm. when the three of you are, are are sitting there and you know you are being misgendered you know but you can see where all of you are trying and, and i mm -hmm. and i think by not villainizing them which would be easy to do i, I mean yeah. It, yeah. it humanizes everybody and you I, I guess just as you were just saying everybody's trying everyone's trying to love yeah. um, and you gave them the space to try as well as taking the space for you to be you which i can see being inspirational for anybody who's going to see this in in trying to reconcile family i also wanted yeah. to add one more thing and then when she starts to sing, when Crystal hit that first note, so first of all, we have so many singing montages in Crystal, first of all. <laughs> we didn't put in the film. Like, call Tom Rome, we have them. Like, there was so many in the film at the beginning when we did the, the, the first uh, assembly cut of the long film. And it was hard to pick which ones we were going to leave in or out. It was really, really hard. <laughs> but that moment when Crystal started Oh. starts to sing i almost took off running like my grandmother <laughs> at church it felt like the holy ghost came into I, I, you felt it like she was like hold on actually because he lives <laughs> I can see tomorrow. <laughs> and when her aunt comes in and starts to sing because if she understands that she identified with her niece right there like no matter who's sitting across from me you know what we have in common is you know the fear of god and that's where the, the hum humanity is seen through God in this case. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I mean, it's just, I always, I remember the first time seeing that, like every, it's just cis women, cis black women mm -hmm. that see that they start crying. I don't know why that mm -hmm. has a cry when they saw that scene and Crystal starts it. And I just think that like, mm -hmm. and it's after the nod. And like, you know, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we have to remember. And I think because. that that's her making them human. That's her seeing the humanity in the person who's villainizing her in the moment, just in that one moment. And she says, actually, you're still human. And I'm not gonna turn my back on you. And I'm gonna love you through what you're putting me through. And I'm gonna still love you because that's all I know how to do. And that's yeah. beautiful. It's an agape love. We can't say that we want to have, let this mind be a me that's also in Christ Jesus. We can't, we can't say these things. We can't say God is love. And then the moment someone wrestles our feathers, we treat them, we, we, oh, I'm done. It's like, it's so easy to do that. It's so, and especially in this world where now social media, you have your click, you have your affirmation group that's gonna make you feel like anything you say is all right and they're your cheerleaders. And so therefore no one's speaking across the table no more. No one's finding middle ground. I'm okay with everyone having their own opinions. I feel like 
that was the beauty of America was the fact that we should be able to speak and have our own opinions and still come to say that we're united, we're United States of America, we're in, the, we're in America and we're united through our differences, the, be, regardless of our, uh, our, our religion differences, that shouldn't be the merits of why we want to be in a safe community along, uh, amongst each other. And for me to say that, and then not like her theological standings. It took me a long time to stop hating myself. But then I said, you guys are so focused on what I do with my flesh when we're spiritual beings. So if we're spiritual beings, don't worry about the flesh. I'm just making it match my spirit, whether you agree with it or not, just continue to recognize my spirit. So when I started singing, I just wanted them to recognize the spirit. And I think uh, uh, the one thing I remember back in the days, um, the psychological um, uh, profess the psychological books when they were uh, diagnosed someone with gender identity disorder, um, it, it the advice was to dis disconnect yourself from any prior existence of yourself. So disconnect from your family, disconnect from all your former pictures, from all your formal stories, pretty much start anew. And I'm like, well, that's a core, that's a core part of my core. I don't know how to disassociate myself with all the things. I still love dancing. I still love singing. I still love God. I still love my family. How do I disconnect this to be successfully transitioning to this woman just because I am affirming myself? through my transition. So that was something that I fought to try to change also with this, because I wanted to show people that it's possible to keep, hold dear to it. That's not a problem, uh, as long as you know how to translate who you are. It's a spectrum. And a lot of times people forget to spit. And I feel so saddened from the fact that people disassemble them, disassociate themselves with the fact that intersexuals do exist. The thing that people think is not possible, naturally, you can be in the middle of gender spectrum. So for you to not believe that someone's spirit can't match their physical, when people's physical, physical entities can be caught in the middle, is it baffles me and that stops a lot of this conversation. So you don't hear that entity being spoken up in media that much because it affirms the fact that someone cannot align with their anatomy when they have to bring existence to the relevancy of an entity that's walking around amongst the earth in silence and not being recognized and can't be free. How do that person feel, you know, when they're naturally that way, when they see how trans people are dying on, or on a higher proportion, that person has to self hurt themselves. They, they, they have to pick one or the other when they weren't born either. And that's just a natural occurrence. And when you talk to anyone from a religious platform or anything about these things, they're, they're kind of stuck. Well, that's different. How so? It's a natural occurrence. Just like naturally, I knew that my estrogen was higher than my testosterone, honey. I just needed to fix my anatomy. That's it. Period. My prolactin level was high enough. <laughs> I just had to fix the, the anatomy. <laughs> um, Chester, as, as we start to, to come to a close here, as you've been involved in this project, this is very dear to you and, and to Elegance. As people are watching this, what, are, what is something that you want people to walk away with having seen this? Well, I want people to walk away with knowing that we're all. Well, first of all, Crystal, you, like you I've said, always human. thought it was interesting. Also, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, human. you froze and a little also, bit. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I want, I want people to understand. First of all, I always, nobody's ever brought this up, but Crystal LaBeja from The Queen, her name is Crystal LaBeja. The fact that Crystal LaBeja is also in periods is a kind of amazing. That those, yeah, I think I we were in conversation with The Queen. At Outfest, the year we came out, we were we played with the Queen actually when we premiered, which was great because it was the the uh, anniversary of the film for that year. Anyway, 
we want people to walk away and take care of their damn kids. We want people to take care of their kids. Half of more than half of them are black. We need you to protect trans women. We need you to, you know, that's that's what we want. We want it. We just talked to 200 kids in Texas uh, two days ago, and it was beautiful to, like, you know, she's like, you know, I'm just a little lesbian girl that this film has inspired me. And, you know, just hearing this from people, Casper's story to Sean's story is beautiful. And I just, yes, I want people to take care of their children and stop putting their kids out for being different. That's what we really want to happen from this movie. And we want every, so as we speak for stuff that we're in, support Crystal as a filmmaker is what we want you to do. Crystal's a documentarian. She makes documentaries now on her own. And, you know, that's what we want you to do. And Crystal, we're in Trans Awareness Week. Yeah. Um, we are dropping this on Transgender Day of Remembrance. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons that we wanted to show this film is we want people to think of you and remember all of you now and, and not after something horrible happens. I want people right. to know you now. As you, it, it, the same question I asked Chester, as, as people are watching this and people are engaging with your story, I want to know one, what you want people to walk away with. And then I want to give you the last word to anyone out there who looks at this movie and says, I'm like her. What would you say? What do you want her to know? Okay, so with it being trans awareness, um... I mean, Trans Remembrance, the Trans Day of Remembrance. Sorry, just kidding. Mm -hmm. um, you said two questions that I don't always get uh, asked all the time. I would want that, the first I'm gonna go with the second question. I would want that little girl that sees themselves in me to know that it's much easier um, don't adopt all the things that people may say you need to adopt to be that girl. Um, take your time, know, discover yourself, know yourself, know that you can succeed with or without the hormones and the surge before you pursue any of those things. Education is key. And I know you hear these things all the time, but it's a fact, because after transition, then what? And so I want you to uh, know that even though that's a tough part and it's gonna be a hard part to get through, that it's just that, a season to get through and be prepared and have your cards in a, in a row and to know that after that, you too can thrive and reach your stores just like everyone else. It's a clean paint. You got the dedication, the drive, go for it. Let, the, let this be a season, not a permanent reservation. Um, and know that if it does get dark, you can get out because I did. Um, and then what I wanna say as far as for those who are watching this film and feel like, um, Oh, is this what all girls go through? No, there's some that do get to stay home. So they'll be your friends and you won't recognize them because their parents accepted them and allowed them to transition. This is the story for someone who try, who's doing it on their own. Um, and we want to keep that from happening because there's a higher success rate of non-suicidal attempts if they can stay home. So I don't want you to see this, see see me and your future daughter or your future gender non-conforming son. I want you to see uh, acceptance, and I want you to I want you to protect your kid, protect your kids from having to face a life like this. Because being out there every day is a risk, and that's why we're at thirty three thousand. Because there's some people that doesn't affirm us in regular spaces. 
I had anxiety traveling in the train a lot of times in New York due to the fact of not feeling like someone would want to share space or if this is the day that someone's not going to think I deserve to be outside or that I deserve to be in this hospital or waiting room with them. So therefore they're going to react and it's gonna be a snowball effect and I'm gonna have a mob trying to lynch me. So don't let the, like, the world isn't that far off just because you see us on television. So please protect those. And if you do accept us, and if you do affirm the woman or the male, cause there's trans men that goes through this too. If you affirm us, please support us in more than just donating support us in providing us resources, housing, and also education. Provide, make sure you hire someone with a real job and not an internship. Make sure you create space to make sure that um, you're funding just as many, not just organizations, buy land, give them housing. Like uh, that's one of the initiatives I was mentioning before. We wanna have safe spaces so people don't have to come to New York to get transitional guidance. Like let's the, the same way we have retreat lands, we should have safe spaces for trans who's in the rural communities, who's on the Bible Belt and things of that sort. So if you see this be motivated, the, the tiny house communities, make a safe space, do something more because right now they're dying from being in cities because that's the only place that they can get free resources. And we have to try something different because, oh, and change, if you do really wanna change something. And I'm just gonna say this because there's over 38 states in America today that will allow someone to get off scot-free for killing someone for the panic defense. And the fact that we say that we want us, these girls to be visible, but we don't protect them from, we don't, we don't lock up these killers from doing it again and using it as an excuse. We are uh, supporting and affirming the abuse and the homicide by giving them a free pass in majority of America for just simply saying that they did not know. So, yeah. Crystal. Also elect trans women to office. Yeah. Offices around the country, by the way. <laughs> just so to add that, sorry. Crystal, Chester, thank you both so very much for joining me in this conversation. Um, thank you for telling the stories of all of these. I, I, I'm old enough, I can say all of these kids in this movie. And, and Crystal, a special thanks to you for sharing your story the way that you did with all of us. Um, and anybody who's watching this, listen to Crystal. Listen to Crystal. Crystal's right. Crystal's right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you.